Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of our ongoing journey to dig deeper into implementing a comprehensive Notion life operating system. A week ago I did an overview, sort of a bird's eye view to give you a sense of how it all fits together. Today we're going to look at the daily tracking, which is super important. It's one of the most important things you can do to achieve what matters to you in your life. In the last two videos, we looked at building a task database, what I call an action item database. And that's really important to deliver on your projects, to do step-by-step -step components that complete big projects that help you deliver on your big overarching goal outcomes and the pillars in your life. The other half of your daily focus is what you track in the daily tracking database. And this is so important because you are what you do every day. Like if you wanna be a writer, you need to write every day. If you want to build a business, you need to move parts of that mission forward every single day. And if you want to be healthy, you need to service that goal in some way every single day. It's not a matter of doing it once a week or once a month or a giant effort on an inconsistent basis is far less effective compared to a small effort on a daily basis. So when you define, and we're going to do this later in the series, at a certain point when we get to the pillars and, and the value goals and the goal outcomes, we're going to define what matters most to us, what we want to achieve in life. And the way you get there is you set daily rituals, daily routines that move you toward that a little bit every single day. You are what you do every day. It's the most important thing. And what gets measured gets done. So you not only have to establish the routine, but you need to track it. Because if you're tracking it, then you're going to do it. Because that's what you're looking at in great detail. That's what you're going to study. In a way, it gamifies it. We've seen some Notion implementations that go heavy on the gamification, but this tracking your daily progress towards the things that you've defined as priorities, it's gamifying it. This is the scoreboard. This is one of the scoreboards. The other scoreboard is achieving your goal outcomes and completing your project. So that's one scoreboard that's part of the game. The other scoreboard is your daily tracking. Are your weight targets getting closer or further away? Are your sales call numbers, are you, if you're, you might set a goal of if business is a priority and you need to sell, you might say, I'm gonna make 30 sales calls a day and I'm gonna track the number of sales calls I make every day. Or you might say, sleep is really important to me and I'll give you a hint, it's really important to everybody. So you should have some way of measuring your sleep habits. When you go to bed, when you wake up, how much sleep you get. And you might track other things, resting heart rate. There are an endless number of things. It could be business, it could be health. So we're going to go through how I do daily tracking in Notion. And then in the next video, when we look at the daily action zone dashboard, we'll see how this rolls up into that in a really elegant and well-integrated way. So here we are in the daily tracking database. And in this database, it's all about table view for me because this is just about capturing the data and seeing if there are any anomalies, if there are any days missing, this is a helpful view because the table view packs more data into a smaller area of real estate than any other view in Notion. So let's dive in. Just to give you a quick sense of how I normally look at it, I normally look at it at higher resolution where you can see a lot more on the screen. But since that's a little small for a video, I'm going to make it larger here so you can see what's going on better. This is the show all view. I typically use 30 days going back, which is nice because it then gives you, if you assign it, the 30 day rolling average across the bottom for each of the properties or fields. Let's just go across these. I'll show you what I'm tracking. The point here isn't for you to track what I'm tracking. The point is for you to decide what matters most for you in your life and then what metric will indicate whether you're moving toward it or away from it. What metrics will ensure that you're doing the activities and paying attention to the priorities that matter for you. And those are the things you should track. Again, I think everyone should track sleep because there is nobody where quality of sleep isn't going to impact their ability to achieve their goals and aspirations. So I think that's one for everybody. And some kind of fitness needs to be in there for everyone. Sorry, it's just there's no escaping fitness. I think nutrition and diet is an important one to track for everybody. And then beyond that, certainly on the business side, you can choose your own. But I'm gonna show you some of mine. So I have cleaned this up a lot. Um, in fact, I put in dummy data and for others, I've uh, turned a lot of the data off. I do collect more, but you don't need to collect a lot. So I tend to do a lot of data tracking, take a quantitative approach, and I wanna make sure the things that matter to me, I'm progressing in. 
And I find that this creates a real incentive for me to deliver on the things that I define as important. This is a form of gamification. This is a scoreboard. I will export this data and import it into Google Docs or into Excel, and I will chart and graph them, which is one of the reasons I have the data set up the way it is, and I'll explain that further. I have it set up to be optimized for exporting into graphing applications because unfortunately Notion doesn't have any graphing or chart features. I hope they will add that at some point. It'd be nice to have that built in, but for now it doesn't, which is okay because it's very good at collecting the data and creating other types of dashboards. And it's very easy to export this as a CSV file, open in Google Sheets or in Microsoft Excel, and then you've got great graphing functionality. I don't do that very often, but perhaps every month I'll take a look at how things are trending. Of course, we've got the rolling averages across the bottom, which is nice. Okay, so going across uh, the title is on the left. I will link this to the week. And that's important because when, I, when we go and do our weekly reviews, which is another video we'll do, that if I link the week through a relational database connection, then I can do a rollup of any other piece of data in here. So when I sit down to do my weekly review, each of these days that I've tagged to that week it'll have the aggregate for any column I choose. So I'll see which days I had workouts on, what my weight fluctuated at throughout the week. And I will see an aggregate at the week level. And then my weekly reviews roll up to the monthly reviews. And that's all entered automatically with the roll up. It's a beautiful feature of Notion, this roll up capability, which I'll talk about more in another video. It also, by having an icon on each week, it's very easy to see the breakdown week by week where they segment out. And then I have a formula here that inserts the day. So formula, you look at it here, that formula just automatically takes the date, inserts it there. Now the way I enter this data is typically in the dashboard, in my action zone dashboard, which is filtered by day. So I click new, this new button up here, but I'll do it from my action zone dashboard, which is filtered by day. So I'm opening it in the same day, so it will automatically enter the date. And then it'll automatically calculate the day, Wednesday, Tuesday. And so that's pretty quick and easy. This whole thing is designed to be super fast to enter data because this stuff needs to a large degree be manually entered. Once we have the API and the Zapier integrations, which is something that's on Notion's priority development schedule, then that's gonna change the game here. But even now, I can enter all this, and I collect more data than most people. I can enter all this in about 50 seconds, 45 to 50 seconds. And yes, of course, I sometimes time it because that's, I just am always trying to optimize for efficiency. So I'll show you how I do that fast entry, but let me just go through the fields. So diet is something I'll assign at the end of the day. I shouldn't have entered this. I, again, I entered some dummy data just for the sake of this demonstration. Typically, any given day, I'm entering the diet number for the previous day. And diet is just the quality of my nutrition and eating for the day. So one is the best, five is the worst. And I will rate the previous day's quality of diet. And it's amazing how much that will track to the weight outcomes. So again, these may not track properly because I just went through and entered a lot of dummy data here just for the sake of this demonstration. Then I go to sleep here. Now sleep, awake, and time. This is sleep time calc. So I will enter the time I went to bed, the time I wake up, and how much sleep I got. Now, for me, this is a little bit easier because I use an aura ring which tracks my sleeping. It'll tell me what time I went to sleep, what time I woke up, and the amount of actual sleep I got. Not just the difference between to bed and awake, but the actual amount of sleep I got. But if you don't have an aura ring, and that's a whole different conversation whether that's worth it or not, all you have to do is enter the time you go to bed, enter the time you wake up, and subtract the difference, and that's going to give you a meaningful number that's going to give you a sense of the amount of sleep you're getting, which again is super important. I'm tracking weight here. I also track some other metrics from my Withings scale, which records the data, sends it to the cloud, syncs it with my app. So when I sit down, I'll just open my app. I'll open the Aura Ring and enter the data straight in. I have the fields for entry set up so they're in the same order as presented in the app. Same thing with the Withings scale app, uh, which is now owned by Nokia, so they may be calling it the Nokia scale. And then finally, I've got the habit tracking, which is built into the full daily tracker. So these are check boxes. Once I do a meditation, I check it off. If I do my bullet planner, I'll check it off. And I've got a routine in the morning. I'll do a future video on morning routine. In my routine, I will automatically do these first bunch of things. 
just that's the first thing I do when I sit down at my desk. And my med morning meditation's already done. I actually have a second meditation, but I'm simplifying the presentation here so it's not overwhelming with data. And then check that off, check that off. And these will be checked off throughout the day as I do them. But if I've got a, a gaping unchecked box, it's telling me, and you'll see in my daily action zone dashboard, it's very clear what's checked off and what's not. If I'm not getting something done, it's gonna be very apparent to me and I will have this perpetual reminder to get it done. The end of the day, I schedule the next day. So schedule tomorrow is something I check off because it's really important to me. I stick to that routine. Uh, whether or not I can get a workout in, that may be the thing that slides the most, but it's a priority. So I track it and I sort of gamify. I try to get as many checked boxes in a row as possible. It it's, becomes painful to break a chain once you get a long chain going. And that's a, a gamified incentive to deliver on these daily habits and routines. At the end of the day, I will rate the percent of time I stayed on schedule as I had scheduled my day the night before and the percent of output that I achieved relative to what I had intended to achieve. And then I'll write out my improvements, like what I can do better to achieve more from the day. And these improvements will roll up to my weekly review automatically. They'll all be listed, the whole week's worth of improvements listed, the whole week's worth of workouts, the whole week's worth of meditations, of my weight, of sleep time, and I'll get a picture of the entire week assessment of that from all, with all this data presented. Same thing happens at the monthly level. We'll do another video on monthly and weekly reviews. So that's pretty much it. I want to show you one other, a couple other features in terms of how I enter this so quickly though. Okay, so you hit new to open it. So the date's filled in, it automatically calculates Tuesday. Diet is something we'll do the following day. So we skip that. Weeks, we click on weeks. Sometimes when you open this, it doesn't give you the options. So you have to click in the space and then it'll give you the options. Now at the end, when I do my weekly review, I'll set up the next week and then the current week always has these two carrots pointing in, these two less than signs. So it's easy in a row to just find the one with the two less than signs. And I just click that and it automatically fills that in. With that, all the other data will roll up to my weekly review automatically. That's all I have to do to make that happen. So hours to sleep. So here's the key for entering it quickly. I've got a field for hours that I went to sleep, the time I went to bed. I've got a field for minutes. And then I've got a, a formula calculating the hours and minutes. There are two reasons for this. One is it's a lot faster to just enter 11, tab, 32, tab, tab. The second tab is to skip the formula. So I enter 11, I enter 32. I find that holding shift and hitting the colon for 11.32 to enter the time is slower because that takes two hands. I can do it with one hand really fast if I'm just entering the hour, tab, minute, tab, and then it calculates the combination. So it's faster and you'll see as I go through, I enter several times and it's just faster to go hour, tab, minute, tab, next, instead of hour, hold shift, hit colon, hit minutes, it's just slower. And when you're doing like five or six of them in the whole entry, it makes a difference. The other reason is because it's very difficult when you export into Excel or Google Sheets to do graphs when you have it formatted in the time format, like 11 colon 32. It's much easier if it's as a fraction. So 11.5 or 11.6 as a fraction. Fractions will map and graph and chart better than time formats. So by doing this, I enter it faster and I get a fraction calculation. So 11.32 rounds out to 11.5. So 11 and a half is the time I went to sleep. One quick note on that, if you happen to go to bed after 1 a.m., enter it as 13. After 2 a.m., enter it as 14. And then it'll graph nicely, because when it flips to 1 a.m., 2 a.m. on a graph, that's not gonna work very well. So just for the sake of graphing and charting. All right, so I come to awake hours. Again, I'm doing this fast. I'm just taking time to explain it. Awake hours, so I'm looking on my app from the Aura Ring, but you can just look at or enter your wake time. So if you wake up at seven, tab, 45, tab, tab, and it calculates 7.8. So 745 in the morning is 7.8. Wake time, the number of hours I slept, eight, tab, 05, tab, tab, and it calculates eight hours and five minutes is 8.1. So then I'll just quickly, you know, enter tab, enter tab. I typically track what time I sit down and start work and it'll calculate that as 7.5, which again is chartable and graphable. Then I usually at this point when I'm filling out in the morning, we'll have done my first meditation, save the second one to later. I'll do my visualization, which we'll do a video on in the future. Uh, business planner, 
sorry, the bullet planner, which we'll do another video on in the future. Mindset work, another video in the future. Workout, anything you wanna track. You define what matters to you, and then you define what will help you get there, and then you enter those things in here and you track them. That's how you make things happen in your life. So one last tip that you may or may not be aware of, this table is going to get pretty wide, and there's a little trick if you have a mouse that scrolls left and right, that's great, that's helpful. But if you don't, all you have to do is hold the shift key and spin the normal up and down scroller on your mouse. If you have one, if you don't have one, you don't know what you're missing, you need one. Get a mouse that has a, a wheel scroller. And normally you scroll that up and down and the page goes up and down. But if you hold shift, it'll scroll left and right. Finally, the last thing I have over here on the right, I do weekly reviews, monthly reviews, quarterly reviews, which are minimal, but you'll see how I keep that all manageable by breaking it up into different parts. On the far right, I'll have the planning review date. Like if I do my weekly review, I'll part of my checklist, the, the end of the checklist, is to come over here and check it off as weekly review done. If I did the weekly review here, I would check that off there. And that lets me know at a glance over here on the right when I've done my weekly reviews and monthly reviews. And that matters more when I see the full view and I see more than just one month view. I'll know if I'm missing weeks, I'll know if I'm missing months. It'll give me an indication of how well I've been doing at hitting my weekly, monthly, quarterly reviews. And let me tell you something, that is the biggest game changer. Like, it, it's hard to get started, but it is so essential to achieving what you wanna achieve in life. Well, I'm gonna do a whole video just on that, but this is where I will track when I hit those review dates. So that lets me just keep an eye on whether or not that's working or there's a breakdown in that system. So that's the daily tracking. From a Notion functionality standpoint, it's pretty simple, though it is setting up some roll-ups, which we'll see the benefit of in a later video. But generally, it's, it's basically just rows of data and entering the data and organizing it in a way that you can enter it really fast. The efficiency of entry is critical to sticking with this. And if you can get it down to like 45, 50 seconds, like I have it, it's just nothing. You make it part of your routine to do this in the morning. And let me tell you, this will change your life. If you get nothing else out of this whole series, just start identifying what matters to you in your life, how you can measure on a daily incremental basis, what'll make a difference in that. Start doing those things daily. It can be the smallest amount. If you wanna meditate, just set a rule, I have to meditate for at least three minutes. Then most of the time you'll do more. But say, my obligation to check off this box is to sit down for three minutes or sit down for five minutes. And then you'll do 10 minutes most of the time. If you set a check box and you'll see the row after row after row, day after day, and if you see all these empty boxes, it's, you're gonna feel, oh, I am failing myself. This will graphically demonstrate to you in front of your eyes every day, because you're gonna put this in your daily action zone dashboard and it will be apparent to you when you're failing. And you're gonna feel like you're letting yourself down because it's visible. But because it's visible, you won't let yourself down. You'll want to live up to that. You wanna see these series, these strings of checkboxes for your habits, these, this row of numbers that are improving gradually over time. If you're falling off of it, you'll know you have to weigh yourself on the scale so that you can enter it. So there's no hiding. This makes everything transparent and transparency helps you get it done and then it shows the results. So this is a scoreboard. Think of this as a game and this is your scoreboard and you wanna win the game. So you wanna put good scores on the board and that's how you do it. That's what this enables. What you do day to day, that's the game. That's what gets things done. You are what you do every day. Don't forget that, implement on that, and this is the tool that helps you execute. So I hope that's helpful. So after starting with a system overview last week, this series of Notion videos is diving deeper into each part of this overall Notion life operating system. If you find this of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below and hit like if you found this valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can unsubscribe at any time, of course, but I hope you'll give it a chance because I work hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is also below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.